Okay, everyone. Right, so next up we've got the Ubuntu podcast, and they've Whee, got... Whee! Round of applause. Whee! Round of applause. Whee. Whee. <laughs> and not only have they laminated their show notes, they've also got a plate of biscuits for almost everyone here. So I suppose without further ado, now on Radio 4, <laughs> it's the Ubuntu podcast. Hello and welcome to the Ubuntu podcast. It's Saturday the 6th of August and this is episode 23 and a half. And I'm Laura and this is Mark. Hello. Martin. Hello. And Alan. Hello. That's my bit done. <laughs> According to the laminated sheet. Right then. So you at the front, you've got a job to do. Uh, you will see plates of biscuits here. Can you hand those around and make sure that uh, everyone at the back gets a choice of biscuits, assorted biscuits, because podcasts are better with biscuits. And maybe mention to the people upstairs who are hungry that there yeah, are biscuits. Yeah, there are here. tons of biscuits down there. There's enough biscuits <laughs> for everyone. Do you want to explain the pre-recording? Once the biscuits have gone out. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's no, fine. It's fine. Shh. It's fine. There's a bit of. Uh, if we could have uh, your so attention, please. When we uh, when we do the podcast, normally we're all remote and we do this over mumble. And when we record, uh, we need to get everything back in sync when it's edited. When someone edits it. Mark, usually. Uh, we need to get it back in sync. And the way we get it all in sync is we all have to say something at the same time. And we'd like you to help us with this. Uh, so what we do is go one, two, three, biscuits. Three, two, one. Really? Shut up. It's one, two, three, biscuits. No, isn't it? Three, two, one. Is it three, two, one? Definitely three, two, one. I clearly never edit the show. <laughs> uh, so it's apparently what? Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Right. Biscuits. So we do three, two, one, biscuits. And in time for the zero, you need to say biscuits. Okay. So practice one. Three, two, one. Biscuits. biscuits! You don't say the three, two, one. You just, you just say don't. the biscuits. Right? Is that right? <laughs> yes. Right, yep. okay. Three, two, one. Biscuits! Perfect. Right, thanks. And um, very quickly, if any of you have got cameras with you, feel free to take photos. We've not got decent photos on our social accounts, so if you get some good ones, uh, put them on Twitter, uh, copy us in, or our Google Plus or email show at ubuntupodcast.org. And our favourite ones will stick up on the socials and hopefully it will tell the data scientists at Google that we're <laughs> moderately popular and they can unban our YouTube channel. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, we <we've> been <laughs> hoping. Hash Foss Talk. Yeah, hashtag Foss Talk. Cool. Laura? Or me? You. All right. Uh, so, uh, apparently... Uh, we, we, don't, we don't have uh, cheers usually in the in the audience like when people when we do a live recording of this this podcast we never have cheering we always have a gentle radio four style applause so we'd like to record you as well as doing biscuits a gentle radio four style applause that we can inject in to make us sound really erudite and uh, clever later on in the show we'll just inject bits of you applauding agreeing with everything we're saying so <laughs> <laughs> if we could please get an applause thank you Who cheered? <laughs> Who was that cheering? <laughs> Thank you very much. Is that everything? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Mark. <laughs> Three, two, one. Biscuits. <laughs> Better than oh, that. Come on. on. You just practiced <laughs> that. <laughs> this is the real one. Okay. Right. Here we go. Three, two, one. I'd like to kill If he doesn't stop I will He's got a ukulele and a voice that's loud and shrill And he lives next door to me And he keeps me up till three With a ukulele and a funny melody Crazy words, crazy tune Or you'll ever hear him croon His bo do di o bo do do di o do 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 Sits around all night long Sings the same words every song bo do di o bo do do di o do Thank you.
Who knew our theme had words? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, we normally record on a Tuesday, and it's now Saturday. What have we been doing since Tuesday? <laughs> I've been laminating. That was easy. <laughs> I'm buying biscuits. Mark, what have you been doing? Uh, I have been playing RimWorld, which I mentioned a few weeks ago on the show. It's an incredibly addictive game. Incredibly simple, available on Steam. Basically, you make a little colony. You're you're living on a, on a planet on the outer rim of the galaxy. If you've seen Firefly, you'll be familiar with the concept. <laughs> Hence the name. I can hear Snickers in the audience. <laughs> so not going out. <laughs> it's like the Hollywood Hollywood late night one. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what about you, Laura? What have you been up to? I've been doing university work. Oh, so I'm hoping to finally <laughs> finish September next year. <laughs> Not this year, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Martin, what have you been up to? Uh, I've been getting the distro that cannot be named to work on the BQM10 tablet. Awesome. Does Ooh. it work? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well done. <Yep>. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Ship it. <laughs> okay. That's sounds the like end of the intro then. Sounds that like a fun packed show. Yeah. Thank oh, you. nicely done. <laughs> Don't look at me. Oh, right, okay. Well, um, first up, it's the community news. Um, so, uh, it's a public service announcement. Ubuntu 1510 is now end of life. So, any of you running 1510 should upgrade to 1604.1. Because 1604.1 has now been released. It has. Who's upgraded? Yep. Yep, Laura. You, did you upgrade? I did. I you there we go. It. There we go. It's no. safe to use. Laura's upgraded. Yeah, it's, it seems fine. <laughs> it's a bit shinier. It's like. Hang on. What were you on previously? Sixty and uh, no, fourteen or four LTS. Okay. But you upgraded to the new LTS, the new shiny. Yes. And it worked. Yes. Did the upgrade work? Yeah, just just worked. <laughs> did you have to like wipe it out completely and reinstall from scratch, or no. did you press the upgrade button and it worked? I pressed the upgrade button. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and it's got different icons, so result. All right. <laughs> yeah, all right, move on. <laughs> I, I, I upgraded my laptop when 16.04 was first released, and it's been running it since then, so that's been fine. I've been holding off on my server, because it's a server, um, which I suppose I'll probably now, I'll, I'll do that now that 16.04.1 is out, but my Steam box is staying on 14.04 until I get a new graphics card. Do you uh, really need shiny new icons on a server? No, but I like. <laughs> I might. I might want shiny new system libraries. I upgraded everything, sixteen oh four, all the things, everything, uh, and it all worked seamlessly. There were no problems. I didn't have to run dpackage configure a, a, a like eight times in order to make it work. It, uh, yeah, it, it was a bit of a fail on a couple of my systems, but um, uh, on on most of them it was okay. I won't mention. Uh, which flavour? Uh, <laughs> I, I had to do that on. You were upgrading from an unsupported version. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> User error. There. But yes, uh, generally uh, everything worked okay and everything was fine. That's the company line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but it just works. There's like so, is is there anything fantastic and interesting about? 1604.1 that wasn't in 1604, or is it just the normal incremental? 1604.1 is the thing where we turn on the the switch that lets everyone have it. Is there anyone who didn't have it before who noticed something new, or will it just keep working as before? Uh, no, for anyone who already had 1604, it will just they will just get updates, updates, and it software. will just be more shiny and more new, and <laughs> still carry on oh. working in theory. Oh, it doesn't have floaty scroll bars anymore. No. Was it, why was the rolling eyes? I was just like, thank God. <laughs> what's, wrong, what's wrong with floaty scroll bars? Well, they just kind of overlapped. And s I don't did know. You, did you prefer the floaty ones? or No, like without the floaty ones. Yeah. I prefer mm. without. I like it now. It's good okay. now. Okay. You'll, you'll be wanting buttons on the right next. Oof. <laughs> I should point out this is the release that has snaps in it. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. There we go. I've mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> you can snap install pod publish now. Pod that's publish? That's yeah, the then you can oh. do the uploading of the show notes and stuff. Oh. Yeah. No, no, we'll leave that up to you, Martin. Oh, all right. <laughs> You do it so well. <laughs> I think that's everything there is to say yeah, about that's, 1604. That's, that's all our community news on 1604. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Let's 
Try that again. <laughs> we can edit that out. <laughs> Why did That's we decide correct. to do that? <laughs> Uh, so uh, we we decided to have a, a chat about um, there's a whole lot of tech that we use that we kind of rely on uh, on a day to day basis and this kind of led to the cards that we handed out to you guys earlier uh, we we kind of um, feel wedded to certain things and I wanted to ask the guys and all of you what things you found yourself wedded to that you you couldn't do without what would you like find yourself really using all the time and you get frustrated when you're far away from it. And um, who's going to go first? Me? You're first on the laminated okay. list. <laughs> yeah. Following the laminated cards of doom, or whatever they're called, then actually, mine's a really easy one. It's this. It's a simple USB cable that I can't do without because every device I have now has one of these to charge it. It used to be that I had a, a Nokia 3210 and there was a strange round barrel and then I had a, a Palm TX that had a strange square connector, kind of edge connector, and then there's the Apple things we won't talk about. But the, everything had that... Oh, the, the Rio 500, my first MP3 player, that had a wacky connector that plugged in the parallel port, right? That was weird. Now, thanks to Europe, yay... Uh, <laughs> we have <laughs> mm. uh, we have this this connector, and I, I and I I have a, a love hate relationship with this cable because I passionately hate all USB connectors. All of them suck up until this ca this cable because of the you know the whole putting them in either way round. And so, what what connectors does that one have? This this that's why it's a love hate relationship because this is the standard US USB A to micro B that charges every device I have. And I have hundreds of these cables, and if I didn't have any of them, if someone went around my house, burgled, this is a good way to mess my stuff <laughs> up, right? <laughs> Go around my house and steal every micro USB cable, and that would just mess me up, because I've got like half a dozen phones, tablets, and all kinds of things. They all use this. So I, I need this, and I love this, but I hate this, because the connector is just awful. It's just... A terrible, terrible connector. However, where's that one gone? <laughs> <laughs> I had a white one. There's a the 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 new one that I bought. I've got one new phone, which is this Ubuntu phone, uh, which has uh, a USB a USB C they connector exist. on it. They do exist. <laughs> you can touch it later if you want. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> thank you, uh, and. Uh, the uh, the connector on it is the USB C, and it can go in either way around. Oh, thank you, Rich. <laughs> Sh gorgeous gentleman from the audience has shown that these go in. Oh, look at that! <gasps> goes in that way, and it goes in that way. Oh, it's nothing just like amazing. a demonstration. Is and has it got the one on the other end as well? No, no, not. Oh, this cable sucks. <laughs> you can have that back. <laughs> so the other good thing is the other end of it. You can put in either way as well, like the A side. So, yeah. So my. Oh, another one? No, that's Apple, isn't it? C, C on each end. C on each end? C. See, those are nice. These are terrible. So that's the thing I couldn't live without, is the, the USB cable. Laura, you're next. Oh, yeah. So I was boring and said my phone. Um, but specifically, when I went traveling in the US last year for about three weeks, um, if I'd lost a broken or had stolen my phone I would have been fairly screwed um, and I was sort of aware of this at the time but from a good point of view um, it had my boarding cards on it um, booking confirmations phone numbers for getting in touch with anyone um, but also it was really quite liberating because I knew that wherever I went if I got lost I had GPS and I could find my way out again um, and then also it had things like Messenger on so there was one point where I was driving through it was about 300 miles through Missouri and then to a museum and then 300 miles back again and so I had a friend who was messaging me every day and just just keep me company as much as anything so that was really cool from lots of different points the sort of the downside of the utter reliance I had on this one phone was that if it had gone missing um, I could probably have got a lot of the stuff back because a lot of it I backed up into the cloud um, but I have two-factor authentication on Ooh. a lot of my <laughs> accounts. Uh -oh. So I spent a good 
many hours before I went away, not just doing packing and things, but sitting and working through the logic of if this had gone, could I actually find the password or the backup code for this account that would allow me to get to this other account that would allow me to get my things? And at one point, there was a circular thing where I thought I could put my backup codes in the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> this seems incredibly <laughs> stressful. It was quite stressful. <laughs> it was, uh, in the end, I worked it out and I printed off some of the backup codes. Um, Did you laminate them? <laughs> no, but I put them in one of those plastic wallets. Oh. So Almost as good. Mark. Yeah. So basically the reason that you're saying your smartphone is the thing you can't live without is because it does all these other things. It does GPS and it lets you keep in contact with people. If you didn't have the smartphone, do you think you would own a GPS device and would you carry with you everywhere like a laptop or something else to let you keep in touch with people and have some kind of sane system for filing all of your travel documents? Or do you think that the you reason this is so good is because it just surely? allows you yeah. not to? You would just take a printed boarding card. So I had to sure. print. I had printouts of my flight details and stuff, but not the boarding cards. But I can always get them reprinted at airports. Right. Um, it was just kind of cool just to be able to go beep on the scanners. <laughs> but <laughs> so the other things like things like GPS, do you, do you rely on them on your phone because so you can? Because you, it's like an extra bonus of having the phone. Or would you always have wanted something like that? Well. In practice, while I was there, in the car I was driving, I had a Heinz... Heinz? No. Hertz. <laughs> <laughs> Just a <laughs> cinnamon soup on your dashboard. <laughs> I had a Hertz uh, GPS, which was so <laughs> unusable, I couldn't work out how to use it. So actually having the Android um, GPS was actually a bit of a saver. Right. Um, and also it meant that I could do... What I hadn't realised was that I was effectively driving Route 66. Um, I didn't know anything about it or anything, found out the night before. So if you can trick Google Maps into going certain routes, and you, it's quite a bit of work to get it to, to do it, it will show you what Route 66 is, so you can drive the old Route 66. So I wouldn't have been able to do that probably without the Google Maps thing. Um, but the other thing is it sort of it allows me to do things that I probably wouldn't do otherwise yeah. because I have that kind of backup. Otherwise, I wouldn't go like just marching off into the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Without doing an awful lot of prep beforehand, at least. Right. You, you don't, like, park your car and then just walk away from it, not turn around and see where you park your car. I you just walk away and think, my phone knows where my car is. I I'm fine. Well, I haven't got it set to do that properly, or not reliably, but I do take a photo before I leave the car now. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Who's next? I believe that's me. And my gadget, which I can't live without, is one of these. It's a steam controller. Ooh. Did you hear that? Ooh. Can I touch it later? <laughs> <laughs> it's very touchable. Control touches, yeah. Um, yeah, so the reason that I picked the steam controller is I'm very into gaming. And before I had this, I built a steam box. Um, so I've got a box under my TV in my living room, which has all my games on. The trouble is, controlling games from your sofa before this came along was terrible, unless you were on a console with the controller specifically designed for that console. Could you not just use a USB controller? You could use a USB controller for games with controller support. Like trip your if girlfriend it, up. If it was, if it was or, or a wireless controller. I had a wireless Xbox controller, which worked great for games which had native controller support because they all supported the Xbox controller. The trouble is, if you wanted something else, say something which needed a mouse pointer, I then was waving a Wii remote at the screen to control <laughs> the mouse pointer. Or I would have my WaveBird controller, which until this is my favourite controller of all time, um, with some like mapping software to try and do things, but didn't really have enough buttons. And then this came along, which has all the buttons in the world and more buttons which you can configure in software to do whatever you need to. It can emulate a trackpad, a mouse, a trackball, a keyboard, a controller, um, and do that all at once. And you can control any game with it. And I've never yet found a game where I haven't thought, yeah, this is the right controller to use. It's just brilliant. It's all you need. Huh. It's a glowing endorsement. <laughs> I have one too. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. It plays driving games very well. I oh I, I don't I don't <laughs> play driving games, I, but I, I play all the other games. <laughs> I have two of them and yeah. uh an Xbox 360 controller and the Xbox 360 controller in our house because I have two children. The 360 controller is the poverty controller <laughs> which which I get and the kids both have the Steam controllers and they both use those and when I say oh let's set up the Steam box and let's play a game there's a crappy Xbox controller on my seat, <laughs> and the kids are both <laughs> holding onto their Steam controllers. No, Dad, you're not having these. So, yeah, they agree with you. Excellent. What yeah. about you, Martin? Uh, well, mine is twofold. The first part is this. I don't know if you've seen one of these before. The purple tag gives it away. This is a Roku. It's a Roku 2. 
Um, What's a Roku, Martin? Well, it's a device that you can plug into a dumb screen and turn it into a, a smart TV, if that's your thing. Um, but uh, <laughs> I built a home <laughs> cinema about 10 years ago. And in that home cinema, there was a CD player and a DVD player and a VCR player and video scalers and all manner of stuff. And now we just have an amp and one of these. And the reason for this is that my wife and I are huge film fans. We have an extensive... You like big films? like big films, long <laughs> films, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> the Big Lebowski is a favourite at our house. Um, and uh, what we've done is we've, we've put all of our DVD and Blu-ray films on a server in the house. Legally? Um, yeah, legally, yeah. Right. yeah. And uh, um, we <laughs> hook this up using Plex to the server. And it now means that we have all of our films at our disposal at a moment's notice. And we probably, we don't watch TV, we just watch films. So this has been a boon in our house, and it also plays our music, so all our music is now in the servers as well. So we've done away with all of that optical media and, you know, nonsense, and we just have a 30 terabyte server upstairs, which... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, a little, little, yeah. it's just this tiny little thing. Well, we've got big lo- we have lots of films. <laughs> and, and, of course, you know, I work with servers as a day job, so right. I'm not going to make a small server. I'm and is that running the original firmware, or is it flashed? Or no, no, this is all original. It around with? No, 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 I just run it straight up. So I have uh, the Plex app installed here, which talks to the Plex server in the house, and then we also have subscriptions for Netflix and Amazon Prime. And then, of course, you've got the, the BBC iPlayer and ITV's equivalent and Channel 4's equivalent and Channel 5's equivalent. So it's actually replaced our terrestrial television stuff as well. So we don't have Freeview or Freesat in the house. We just have these. So what's Louise doing while you're here with it? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, well, this... <laughs> this is the Roku 2. <laughs> and these have just been uh, uh, uplifted to the Roku 3. So this is actually spare. This uh, uh, is out of my office. Whoop. <laughs> and it's a good Thank job. It's a good that. job I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Oh. And so, you like literally get that out of the box, plug it into the TV, install an app, and you can watch all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You don't have to monkey around. You're not. There, is there any chance? Like, so I I got a Sky Now TV thing that was yeah. cheap. The and then they they device. did an over the air the update and completely hosed it and made right. it. So I had to pay for stuff, which I'm not going to do. Um. And I wonder if, like, those, you know, it's a cloud device thing, isn't it? So uh, well, could they do the same? Um, no, because um, you can choose not to accept the updates on ah, this. Ah, um, And also, because I have, p- uh, also it has um, ports around the back here, so you can actually plug in USB devices. So if you wanted to, they've got an app which is just for local media. So you could plug in USB storage into the back of this thing, and you could just run it all locally if that's what you wanted huh. to do. We run it over Ethernet using home plugs. But um, to your point, before we had these, I actually experimented with Raspberry Pis and Kodi, but the wife acceptance factor was very low <laughs> on that solution. Really? Uh, but this was uh, extremely She's not popular. a big fan of GPIO ports, is your No, wife. no, <laughs> no. Weird. So... Um, <laughs> Uh, so that got me thinking when we when we started thinking about these things that we feel we can't live without I kind of thought I'm sure I've had this feeling before I'm sure I felt I can't live without this thing before and it turns out I did so then I started thinking okay what can we think of that we used to think we could could not live without but actually turns out we can live without Uh, and who's going first you're first on the list oh my god Uh, so uh, I used to be a subscriber before the internet of a thing called Kix. I don't know if any of you, any of you mm. use Kix. <laughs> yeah. Why is that? Gig- uh, it's not not Kix. I was a subscriber to Oo BBS and Nildram BBS. Huh. Ah. So so <laughs> Kix Kix was a thing where you could like telnet in and issue commands and. There were forums, and you could like browse the forums and post, and it, it was basically just a giant forum system, BBS type thing. But there was a piece of software for Windows. I was running Windows at the time, called Amiol, uh, which stood for a most excellent offline reader. <laughs> offline, yeah, the reader bit was not in Amiol. Um, <laughs> so it was a most excellent offline thing and uh this thing you you would it would dial up and drag down all your messages and send all your posts and stuff and i became addicted to this thing and it had there were there was a forum for auctions a bit like ebay there was a for a forum for like tech support there was discussion forums for everything and it it made sense to me i'm much more than online web forums do now 
it, it, it was nice because it was a bit like email. You could like send your post and then dial up the next day and then you get a whole load more posts. And I felt it was a really lovely community. And there were loads of people who, who used to use it. I think Terry Pratchett used to use uh, Kicks and he was quite active on it. And I think one of the biggest forums on there was called Bikers. And the Bikers chat forum was just full of people giving support to other people for whatever. So people would ask computer questions, not in the computer tech forum, <laughs> but in the bikers <laughs> forum because the bikers all knew this stuff. Right? <laughs> and, and it was just a really, really lovely community uh, and, and place to be. And at the time, before the internet came along, it was the place where I you know, got involved with tech and stuff with other people. And I, I, at the time, I felt, oh, nothing will replace this. Yeah. Now the internet. Goodbye, kicks. Yeah, back yeah. then I was had FidoNet email, and that was how I was able to download stuff back in the day. And I remember downloading all of the floppy disks for s uh, Idrisil Linux. But That's how I found I Idrisil and actually downloaded it. But your download solutions aren't a lot different now. Well, they're a lot better now because back then, the first set of 14 floppy disks I downloaded, I forgot to enable binary mode. <laughs> so I, I had boot and root disks that didn't do a whole lot and I had to download them all again. And considering you had a quota, it actually took two weeks to download the first set and it took another two weeks to re-download them all again. So, so that was commitment. Laura, what have you used to think you couldn't live without, but actually it turns out you can? Um, uh, well... When I was a student in a student house, um, I had a telephone extension cable. We had a three-floor um, uh, terraced house, and I was at the top, and the telephone point was at the bottom. <laughs> and so I had to go and buy from Wilco's, the cheap shop, um, this really long extension cable to run all the way to the top so that I could run a modem from my, and my PC. And then, of course, we'd all fight over who had the connection because <laughs> only one of us could dial up at once. <laughs> so at some point later... Um, we set up a single PC, which had a share, did the modem, but had a shared connection. And then I had a 10 meter Ethernet cable <laughs> <laughs> running. You love your long cables, don't <laughs> yeah. you? Yeah, it was red, this one. I remember it fondly. Um, ran that all <laughs> the way up the stairs to my room, to my computer. Um, and then that got superseded by Wi Fi, obviously. Um, the PC uh, that did the connection sharing got superseded by a DSL router and home hub thing all built in together um, and my PC became a laptop, a tablet and a smartphone so it was a good thing that the wireless came along really <laughs> God. so flashbacks to <laughs> un unwinding BT cables and actually I, I rented, yeah. a, rented a house where I uh, they had a payphone and we discovered that you could just unplug the payphone and plug a modem in <laughs> <laughs> I felt a bit guilty sometimes I would throw a few coins in the payphone <laughs> <laughs> Probably not enough to cover the vast <laughs> internet <laughs> dial-up <laughs> costs. I feel bad now. Don't record. Don't record that. Uh, Mark, <laughs> what do you think you couldn't live without? Well, when I was at school, I used to have a Palm PDA. <laughs> <laughs> when you <were> at school. <laughs> 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 ha, who's old now? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Mark so, is quite a bit younger than the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> so fir first off, I, I used to have a Palm 3E, which was this black and white thing with a, with a thing over the front to protect the screen, unless you're my dad and you sat on his. Um, so but the, the thing that I loved about this was b it was like a smartphone, but before smartphones, because yeah. it had all of my, like, my calendar and my notes and everything else on. But it also, the best thing about it is that it let you write on the screen. Oh, yeah. graffiti. Graffiti. So yeah. the, the own, the He's only the only person I know who still writes graffiti I, fluently. I, I now have graffiti I on my Android devices, and it is the only input method I use, because I'm so much quicker with it than I've ever been with an on-screen keyboard. <laughs> He's fast. I know, right? Yeah. It boggles us every time he tells us this. Um, We're like, you're still doing that. My problem is, is that my handwriting is graffiti. Yes. Because no, I yeah. used it so extensively. <laughs> Uh, if you ever see yeah. it right in person, so, it's, yeah. it's graffiti. Those of you who are unaware of graffiti, is it's like a, a handwriting recognition, except instead of recognising your handwriting, you learn its way of writing the letters. <laughs> so some of the things are just like an A is like a triangle with no bottom. So sometimes if you're writing quickly and you know this very well, you end up with some weird things which don't make any sense. But yeah, so I've had... I had... <laughs> I had I never had an Apple Newton. I had three Palm PDAs. I don't think anyone ever had an Apple Newton, did <gasps> I? I had. <laughs> we just all, all saw There's the There's that one guy in the UK, <laughs> that one guy over there who had one. I, I had a Palm 3E. I then upgraded to a Palm Zaya 7.1, which is in colour, 
and s- Ooh, get you. Oh yeah. And then a, and that had a camera on where you had to you pushed up the front and it sort of split in two and the camera popped out. Um, and then I, I moved to a Palm Zaya 7.2, which was the same except without the slidey out thing. I had, I had a Palm TX, and the only reason that I stopped using it was because it wouldn't do uh, WPA. Because it, it only, oh, yeah, only did wet. 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 Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. And that was when it got consigned to the drawer, was when oh. it wouldn't do secure internet. Yeah, so that was well, it was one mm. of the last models and one of the only ones which actually did Wi-Fi. Because mine mm. only ever did, the, the, the last one I had only did Bluetooth, and everything else you plugged it in, and you pressed the sync button, oh, and it went... Palm desktop! <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, but you could also get you could also get um, K Pilot and J Pilot for, yes. for Linux, and then it would sync with your with oh your God. calendar on your Linux desktop, and then you could sync that with Maybe whatever. Else. Flashbacks to bug reports <laughs> in Ubuntu <laughs> about Palm syncing. On oh my gosh! Right, so uh, that's Martin. my thing. No, yes, Martin. Uh, Martin. The thing that I used to have that I thought I couldn't do without was a Pace Twin PVR, which was the very first dual channel free view. PVR recorder that was available in the UK in oh. sort of 2003, and uh, it was amazing. This thing, and I, I, I still believe it had the best UI th- uh, that's never been surpassed for actually looking at the channels and setting up your recordings. Who Pace? Yeah, it was because um, Pace at the time used to make the Skyboxes, and this was actually w- the the current day Skybox rebadged. Took out the satellite tuners t- for terrestrial tuners, and it was uh, reshipped to, for Freeview, and it was glorious. And we used it for seven years, and um, yeah, that that was sort of the centerpiece of how we got our TV. And we loved the idea that we didn't have to, you know, watch the scheduled television as it happened with the adverts and all the rest <laughs> of it. We could just record it and watch it at our Wait, leisure. What year was this? What year? Th- Two thousand and three. Right. So yeah. my. Uh, Son was born in uh, what's nine from this year. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Parents what of the year that award goes to Alan Pope. <laughs> Eight, like we we started having pausable TV, right? And we'd go around relatives' houses, and they'd and they'd call him for dinner, and he'd go, "Oh, can I pause the telly?" And yeah. th- he just ha- naturally thought every TV was pausable. Yeah. Like. My what? Da- my Your TV can't be paused. My no, daughter rubbish. looks aghast when she goes around to other people's houses now, and they say we can't pause it. And she's <laughs> like, what do you mean you can't pause it? <laughs> Stone Age television. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, did it have advert skips? Uh, it did. It had a button to accelerate past the adverts. Yes. So the, the, all the all the TV boxes we've had recently have had a fast forward button, but the Humax PVR that I had about the same time, ninety two hundred T. Yeah, I've brilliant got device. one of those. Yeah, as well. that good. <laughs> uh, it had a, an ad, a configurable ad skip forward and back button, and you could set the forward one to like one minute mm-hmm. and the back button to 30 seconds that's right and so i would like when the adverts come on you go bam 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 one that's two three like four four yeah. bam yeah. straight through the adverts yeah. not watching those um but if you overshot you could go back, back one 30 seconds yeah yeah, Winner. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i i do you know i i i miss those days because claire my wife bless her is terrible with the fast forward button she'll like press the fast forward button repeatedly on our on our virgin box go up to 32 times and then <laughs> sail past <laughs> the, the next segment. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's just a rewind. Anyway, is that the end of that? I think it is. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we're on schedule. Check Joe will be pleased to hear. Now, uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit of a surprise. Is this you, Martin? I think it might be. Uh, we're now going to run through the best command line loves ever. So, Alan, what is your favourite? Uh, so people keep sending these things in, and they they tell us, you know, this is a great command. You should try this. And there was one that I tried, and it's called. It's actually a Python script, and it's called ps underscore mem, and you'll find it on GitHub, uh, and you run it with sudo. And it it's like top for memory usage of your applications. You just run sudo psmem, and it goes and finds out what's using up all your memory, and then produces a list of all the applications. But it aggregates them. So when you've got Google Chrome that has a thousand processes and eats all your RAM, it's just one line: Chrome, all your RAM. <laughs> just like <laughs> has one line, and then like another line for all the other things that are eating your RAM. But PSMEM is my favorite. I use it all the time. You, and I, there I, is a switch to unaggregate as well. Oh, so I wouldn't if, want to do that. No, it would just be Chrome, 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 Chrome. No, but when you're looking at servers and you want to see which um, thread of a process is actually consuming the RAM, you can 
find out that as well. It's hmm. extremely useful. Cool. Yeah. So PS Memory's mine. Laura. So I don't <laughs> <laughs> I don't use command line routinely. I have no need to. Um I've no problem using it and I do use it probably more often than I think. But it tends to be for a specific thing. And so all the command line loves that come in are brilliant and they sound <laughs> ace but I have no need for them. <laughs> Laura is the least enthusiastic Sorry. person about command line yeah. love. <laughs> so I just sit there and go, yeah, great, cool. But that's, that's surely because it's the year of Linux on the desktop. Yep. <laughs> to, to so some extent, I kind yeah. of agree with your point of view because I lived through Linux being rubbish for the desktop and the GUI. Last so the year. fact that you can do so much on the desktop now and not have to resort to the command line all the time, because I do that in my day job because it's flexible and it's the way to work. Yeah. But when I'm at home, I don't want to be doing that stuff all the time. And I try to resist doing <laughs> it. So I do agree with your point of view. My, yeah. <laughs> my uh, uh, daughter came into my room, this is a few years ago, and she'd been playing Minecraft on, on one PC. I think it was either Windows or Mac. It doesn't really matter. She came in to me and sh she said, should we play Minecraft? I went, okay. I opened the terminal, CD Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> Java minus jar, Minecraft.jar. <laughs> and she went, why do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. So if something goes wrong, often it's um, I go on the internet and find out how to fix it, and that usually involves using command line. So I do, and that's not fine. Yeah, most like. Uh, and then I forget how it works. So next time it comes around, I don't remember. I have to look it up again. So yeah, I use things like ls apt get <laughs> top <laughs> top. I use quite a lot, surprisingly. I have lots of tabs open um, on the browsers. Use uh, TSMM. It will tell you it's Chrome. H I should do, shouldn't I? I use CD. That's quite a good one. <laughs> 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 oh, you, you name minus A. That's really useful when Ubuntu won't install another kernel update because your uh, slash boot space is full because you've got or an you've encrypted hard drive. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I use the command line then as well. Um, yeah. So all those things. Um, yeah. Awesome. So. Uh, Mark. Yes, that's my name. You yes. don't need to look so confused. <laughs> um, so Laura just spoke about looking something up and then using it and then forgetting, and then next time you you just have to look it up again. Well, my favourite command line up of all time is Control and R. <laughs> <laughs> So you can Whoa! you can press yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, that you, you can you can look through previous commands by pressing up, and that will give you the last command and the command before that and the command before that. You press Control and R, and then you type a bit which you know was in that command that you did like however long ago. It will find anything with that in, and then you keep pressing Control R, and it goes back just through those things until you find the command that you what? want. Wait, what? So <laughs> sorry. So you press Control R, then you start typing, you start and then typing. you keep pressing Control R. Yes. And then, no and then it will go through the history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you hit enter, and then it runs the command. So I found. knew that we'd done this on one of the shows. Yeah. And yeah. every s and I spent so I spent ages going up, 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 and then having to do it again because there's like three commands in a sequence, and you have to keep going back. And I knew there was something we done. I couldn't remember what it was. The trouble is, you can't press Control R to find when you press Control R. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, my favourite command line love is HSTR which is control R on steroids. Because when, what, what, it's an extension to bash, so if you're using bash, and there's reasons why I have to, but I don't choose to normally, um, you press control R, you start typing, and then you get a drop-down list of all of your stuff, and you can actually scroll through it and navigate. And there are filters, so you can actually filter your command history. And it shows you lots as well. It's not oh just yeah, one. It's, it's, it's like a full screen. Yeah, yeah. it's a full screen of everything. And, and you can filter it for... Uh, and it's got some intelligence. So um, it will favour things to the top of the list based on the directory that you're in and the, uh, the frequency with which you've used commands in those locations. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I'm impressed. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're impressed by that, you should all be using the fish shell because yeah. that its command yeah. history is... There we go, <laughs> fish shell users. Brilliant. Excellent. <laughs> so that's everything... We um, loved from our command line. That's loves, our favourite command line loves. <laughs> I'm not sure what this noise is supposed to be. <laughs> Yay! So finally, finally, who's doing this bit? Go on. All right. You. You start. Uh, you may have seen these cards. I lovingly printed out yesterday. 
uh, which were asking you the question uh, as part of our forced, enforced fun audience participation. Uh, what gadget or technology can't you live without? Obviously referencing what the conversation we had earlier. See what we did there? Uh, and loads of you filled them in. Uh, uh, and we're going to run through some of the best ones. Uh, not that any of the ones we don't read out are not the best. <laughs> 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 However, I have to point out, I did write uh, bonus points for being fun original and not saying my phone or internet. These are the ones where people said the phone or the internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Ressington. <laughs> <laughs> phone. <laughs> it's my main computing device. Okay, fair enough. Uh, there was another one here from Hungry Horace. Uh, I suspect that might be our nom de plume. Uh, who wrote my phone and then read the bit at the bottom <laughs> and said, okay, YouTube. Um, <laughs> uh, We've got another, the internet. Um, and Stephen also wrote Android phone and virtualization. Harry Ferry, iPhone, uh, Andrew Ford at the moment, 1990s vintage IBM PC XT keyboard. Yes. And my phone in brackets. <laughs> <laughs> well, plugged like into the phone. <laughs> um, so, yeah, what have you got? Um, I have from Stuart Langridge my wireless Raspberry Pi based system to wish me farewell in a variety of colours and then greet me on return. It's a Wi Fi hi bye guy die pie. <laughs> <laughs> That better exist. <laughs> it needs to <laughs> now. <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Laura. Speaking of GitHub, uh, we've got Joe Borg, um, and he says Git because it's a great version control tool and it gives Joe Restington something to be 100% wrong about. <laughs> Don't blame me, it's Paddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got one here from Dirk. Uh, who uh, says that Oh My ZSH and GitHub are the th gadgets and technology? Where are you? Where are you? Yeah. Where? Hello there. Yes. Oh My ZSH. Um, like fishermen for fish. You should be using fish shell. Uh, but you're quite right. Y I completely oh agree dear. with this point. We're I'm too shells. lazy to set stuff up and remember things, and that's precisely the point. Why remember it? Uh, Giuseppe says TCPIP over bongo drums. <laughs> <laughs> and then fills the, in the corner. It feels the need to clarify, yes, it's a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, GNU slash Linux. Uh, that we can't live without. Which is, yes, I agree with that. Oh. I have one from Dave too. Light bulbs, because the bog here has made me realise their oh. utility. <laughs> uh, oh, in marquee. Uh, Rich Wareham. Uh, Google Cardboard for watching YouTube in bed without waking my girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> waking. We should just stop there, shouldn't we? <laughs> uh, Andy T, T for his uh, Garmin GPS watch because it constantly reminds him of how slowly he's running and how <laughs> fit he is. Uh, and more, more data is obviously better, right? Mm. Uh, Mega Slippers, hello Dave, says Twitter. How else would I scream into the void? <laughs> 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 yeah, sounds fair. Someone just handed me another one, which is my phone. Uh. <laughs> Did you, do you have another one? No. I'm is out. that all of them? Okay. You should have three. No, I, I gave one to Popey because it said the internet. Ah, uh, uh -huh. uh, okay. Bad sorting. Uh, <laughs> so uh, one from DGL says, noise cancelling headphones because they let me ignore the world on demand. <laughs> Brilliant. I think that's all of the feedback we have. I think oh, no, Laura's got no, one. One more. I've got one from Jesse. My Harmony Remote by Logitech, the TV slash Hi-Fi Chromecast Roku switching um, was a killer with multiple remotes, and this is a simplistic dream. I have to say I agree, as long as you set it up right. <laughs> oh, you have experience of oh. this. So I have one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have the really, really basic things set up, and they are a dream. It's just like, bing, bing, you can watch TV or watch DVD. But as soon as you want to go off script, it's easier just to get the original remote out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think that's all of your feedback. Just get a rope. Thank you very much.
<laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Uh, and that's all we have that's for it. you this week. That's the end of the show. Thank you all for coming along and listening. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Laminated. You are one minute early. This would not happen in Germany. <laughs> but I, yeah, I can everyone, play my ukulele some more if you want. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone, yeah, thanks again to the Ubuntu podcast. <laughs> and two bits of housekeeping. Don't forget the podcast is Beer Fund, which has got notes in it inexplicably, and also. Uh, <laughs> We've got some T-shirts as well. So if you want a T-shirt, 10 quid for what I'm wearing. So come and see me if you want one. Got that one. <laughs> 20, 20 for that one. <laughs> yeah. 20 for the extra stink. <laughs> right, back in half an hour. Right.